Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan. Um, welcome to our channel and videos at True DFS. Um, this video is sponsored by True DFS, um, so come check it out. Um, um, but we, you know, try to make these videos daily or every other day at least um, to go over DFS slates for those of you who are new. Um, but yeah, so yeah, if some people find these videos helpful and informative, so hopefully, you know, you find it as well helpful. So today's slate or tonight's slate for July 27th, um, it's going to be a four game slate. I know yesterday was a very rare day where we did not have a DFS slate in League of Legends because DraftKings was going through server maintenance. Um, so hopefully, you know, that's whatever issues they were, they were having, or, you know, just the checkup has been, you know, has gone well. So now today we get back to our nightly grind or morning grind of League of Legends. So, um, so yeah, let's dive in without any further ado. I have pretty good leans as to, you know, who I think will win. I think we have pretty good, close, close, very close matchups in China in the LPL. And then, you know, pretty one-sided, heavy favorites um, in the LCK matchups. So, yeah, let's just go into the LCK matchups first because I think that will be easier to kind of go over. I'll probably spend less than two, three minutes talking about the LCK matchups today. But I will point out um, some important key roster changes that some people, uh, some teams have made. So the first Korean matchup is T1 versus KT. Um, obviously, T1 is, you know, one of the top two teams along with Gen G uh, that has played really well. Um, KT actually has been playing pretty well as well. Um, I think they're in the top half of the LCK um, after T1, Gen G, Dalman, Kia, DRX, and then Sandbox. So KT is trying to break through you know, to the top half of that LCK power rankings, um, at least in the standings um, before the playoff starts. So KT actually has been playing really well with uh, aiming has been a beast in the bottom lane as an AD carry. And then Vikla and Rascal have been playing pretty well for that team as well. I, I mean, I think Vikla should still start here, um, you know, just based on the performance that he's had and that his team has had. Um, over Aria. So I think Vikla should start and play the whole series. But, you know, they're going, going up against the Juggernaut team in T T1, and T1 has been really good. Um, not, not like as great as they were in the spring split, where you know, obviously they went undefeated. Um, but they've been winning games. They've been winning series. Obviously, they're in the first place in the summer split standings, but they've been winning games two to one. Um, they've been winning the series two to one. So it's they've been a little bit shaky here and there against good and bad teams, actually. Um, so I think KT has a shot. I would give them maybe two out of 10 chances to, you know, chance to win upset T1 here. But at the end of the day, I think T1 really needs the series wins um, going up against Gen G and for that top spot in the LCK summer split. So I think T1 will take care of business here. And like I said, T KT's uh, strengths have been, you know, aiming life here in the bottom lane. And then I would say probably in the top lane. But really, I mean, T1's strength has been in the top lane where Zeus, I mean, he will be better than Rascal, in my opinion, in this series. Um, and then in the bottom lane, Gumayushi and Karia, their form has been coming up. I know in, earlier in the summer split, right after the MSI, where T1 has lost to RNG in the finals of the MSI, um, Gumayushi's form has gone down like this. Um, earlier, like let's say, you know, first like two, three weeks of, or three, four weeks of the summer split, the bottom lane has struggled. But now they're coming back up a little bit with Gumayushi playing really well. So I do think that's going to help T1 kind of, um, you know, like solidify the, the bottom lane pressure um, that they like to have. Um, you know, T1 is the type of a team where, you know, they just don't let Gumayushi and Carry a farm and do their own things. They, they're always engaged, you know, as a team and team synergy and chemistry are really good where I think that's going to help T1 kind of overcome the, the performance, the good form that aiming and life have been in 
um, for KT. I think that's going to be neutralized by T1's, um, you know, constant map pressure that they like to put on the other teams. So I think T I have T1 winning 2-2-1, two, two, I think. I do think there's a good chance that T1 could drop a game in the series. So I'd say T1 winning 2-1. to one. And then the kill upside, um, we'll go over the kill upside after the match predictions, I think. I think that'd be better. Um, so yeah, HLE versus Damon Kia. Damon Kia should win this handedly there. That's why, I mean, I agree with the odds. They're at minus 2,000 favorite. Dudu for HLE has only been playing NAR. So obviously his champion pool is very limited going up against the top, you know, probably one of the best top laners in the LCK, in my opinion, this summer split, Nuguri, after coming back for the summer split for Damon Kia. I think that's going to be a tough, tall task for Dudu. So I think that uh, there's an advantage there. And then obviously Canyon is better than on fleet. Canyon has, you know, is one of the best junglers in the LCK. I know his form has been up and down a little bit in the summer split, but he is miles, miles, you know, miles and miles better than on fleek. Uh, on fleek has been prone to making a lot of mistakes and bad calls for that team for HLE. And then Showmaker over Karis. Um, Karis has been decent. I mean, he, lately, I think. Um, I think he actually has been the best player for HLE, even though they've been losing a lot of games. Um, but Showmaker is a step above, tier above than Karis. And then here I'm pointing out that roster change that I was talking about for HLE. They actually called back up Sam D uh, to the LCK level team for HLE. Um, and they sent down, maybe they didn't send down Choni, Chani, uh, I believe, um, who had been starting for HLE, but Sam D got called up and he should be able to start. Uh, maybe not. Um, this is my expected lineup. Yeah, I don't know the exact rule when he gets called up. Maybe he can't He can't play until Thursday or Friday. I, there's, I, I thought I saw a rule like that maybe. So I'll just keep their eyes out on the AD carry position here, but I would not recommend playing any HLE tonight. Um, so, you know. I'm not going to play any Sam D or Chani for A to carry for HLE. So, but I'm just pointing it out because, you know, there could be potential for change there, obviously. And Vista, you know, and he just, eh. Duck Dom and Kellen should win that matchup anyway. So, so like I said, I'm only interested in Dom and Kia, but we'll measure the kill upside after um, I predict the LPL matchups, which we'll just talk about right now. So LPL closer matchups in terms of odds, LGD against WE top, I mean, the bottom, like the bottom of the bottom two teams, you know, at the bottom of the standings. But I actually have a pretty good lean here. I know WE is actually the underdog in this matchup based on the odds, but actually they're starting some of the players that I very much prefer uh, for WE. I know Shanks is back in the mid lane and he has been far by far the better mid laner than Xie. Xie is the one who started, I guess, I think against IG Invictus Gaming when they lost that series, when WE lost that series. He was horrible. Xie was horrible in that series. And I'm glad that they're going back to Shanks because Shanks, in my opinion, has been the best player for Team WE, even though they haven't won a single game or single series. Um, he has been the only, you know, sole bright spot for Team WE, in my opinion. And I'm glad he's back because that increases WE's chances to win, along with uh, along with Shing and Kadaya. I know he'll, I think, started a few games, few series here and there for Team WE, but Shing and Kadaya actually has been the best bottom duo that they could put out, in my opinion. And really, the bottom here half of this roster, WE, Shanks, Shing, and Kadaya have been the best uh, mid laner, AD carry, and support players that they could put out, in my opinion, in that on that roster, on that team. So I'm glad that they're going back, and that will tremendously increase their chance to beat LGD today. And also, just based on the individual matchups here, like I said, Shanks has been really good. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, Hi Chow. Actually, it's probably a worst, not a worst, is a worse mid laner than Gay G has been for LGD. And Awesome and Jin Zhao 
have been these they were decent early in the summer split um but actually they've been they've been really bad the last couple weeks couple series rather um so i do think we has an advantage in all of those lanes right there and um view is coming in here again uh over beishang view started the last series against uh invictus gaming and he had an okay showing i mean he's not He's, I mean, he and both, both he and Beishang have been pretty bad. So it's not like these are huge downgrade or upgrade over Beishang. So I think that's fine. Um, but I'll show, I'll tell you why that's fine because Kui here is starting for LGD. Like I said, as you can see, LGD has been just plugging in new players here and there and new roster construction. The team chemistry has been so off and it's been so disruptive as to what the coaches have been doing, plugging in different players and changing different combinations of the roster. I mean, of the players. So, but like I said, again, as I mentioned that high chow is worse mid laner than AG. And I feel the same way about Kui, uh, you know, against shadow shadow is far by far probably you know a better jungler than lgd i know shadow has some personality issues um i understand that but being the bottom tier team that they are they really need to just put out the best talented roster to win a single series i know they've won a single series but going up against we this is a very very winnable series for lgd but they're actually putting out the worst jungler in kui so I said, that's why I was, that's why I said view for team WE has a better chance at, you know, just being a better jungler between that match in the matchup today. And then fearness is actually, in my opinion, better than um, Chilitzi for LGD. So I'm glad that he's starting uh, for those LGD fans. And I don't really know much about demon. I think he is probably coming up from the LPL uh, or LDL, I guess the minor league equivalent uh, for LPL um, from that team the affiliate for team we but let me check real quick we'll check it together because i haven't looked that up yet but i'm not that scared of let's see going up against uh what's his name fearness demon team we low okay that's his picture i think yeah same picture he actually yeah so he came up from we academy um no demon okay the top laner he leaves for main roster so he got called up july 19th okay did he start one game did he play in any other game i don't think he did Let's see who has he has been playing in the minor league equivalent level. Cannon, Fiora, Nar, Gwen. I mean, yeah, I mean, these are some meta champs, but he hasn't been that great. But Biu Biu, who was who was starting for Team WE, was not very good either. So let's see. So like I said, he's coming up from hit the minor league affiliate. Um, for Team WE, as you hear, Demon joins. Let me see what this Weibo post says. I'm not fluent in Chinese, so communication. Okay. All right, when was this? It's July 19th. Okay. So it's been a while. So that means he's been scrimming with the team for the last week. So I think that's a good sign, unlike where they promote the player like a few days before um, the actual match date. So I think this is good. Um, so at, anyway, at, at the end of the day, I prefer, very much prefer Team WE's chances here to upset LGD. So I'm going to probably play a lot of Team WE today. Um, also, LGD tends to give up a lot of deaths in their team fights um, in their games. So I think team that makes Team WE is one of my favorite stacks uh, to, to use for roster construction to build the DFS lineups today here uh, on this slate. 
So I'm predicting Team WE to beat LGD two to zero. I think, I think, like I said, every single lane, except for maybe in the top lane, I think I pr very much prefer Team WE today. The second matchup in the LPL, um, I'll show you the odds. It's anyone's legend as a favorite at minus 135 uh, versus um, OMG as an underdog. And I actually agree. I know OMG, a lot of people are riding high on OMG or were riding high because they had a really good showing early, like early in the summer split. But their form has gone up for the like the first two weeks of the split and then just gone down slightly and then like spiked down a lot. Especially in the mid lane, Cream has been really bad the last two series, in my opinion, and he's been the weakest link along with Aki, the jungler. I think the bottom lane has been okay with Abel and Cold. Um, Shanji in the top lane actually has been great. Like I'll give credit where it's one, you know, where it's due. Like I'm not just criticizing these players because I feel like, you know, I actually watch the videos and watch the games. And Shanji has been lights out on. I think he 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 had a very interesting pick in Lilia um, in in their last series, and he actually did really well. So I don't think it, it's really like a champion thing. I mean, he really is a good, good, good player um, who can dominate with any champion, in my opinion. So that's that's the one lane that I will give OMG um, advantage here. But every other lane, I mean, on the other hand, any <clears throat> on the other side of the matchup is anyone's legend. And they've been playing really well. Um, unlike OMG's, AL's uh, form has been coming up and up. I know they kind of, you know, ran against the wall um, and the FPX, I believe FPX has been, you know, an up and coming team after they plugged in summit in the top lane. So I, I kind of fully expected anyone's legend to struggle against them. Um, but um, I, I do think they are a tier above than OMG um, with Xiao Hao in the jungle. Um, he's been lights out. I mean, he, along with Beichuan for Thunder Talk, I feel like have been the most improved players um, in the LPL. Like Xiao Hao, probably one of the top five junglers, in my opinion, in the LPL right now. That's how good he's been. Um, so I do think he has a tremendous advantage over Aki, who it's just like, he's, Aki's not very good. I don't know how else I can put it. Um, his kill participation is really bad. And it's not like he has a signature, you know, signature champion that he's really good at. Um, he just lacks map pressure. Um, I think he's okay as like a utility jungler for OMG, but that's not what they really need, especially when their best player is in the top lane. I mean, the other four four laners aren't, you know, players are not very good. Um, and then Betty and Chocho. Well, let's go to the mid lane because I talked about how bad Cream has been. So I do think that um, kind of evens out the matchup. I actually would have picked Cream. Um, I like Cream as a player, uh, but earlier in the summer split, he was really good. But the last two series, like I definitely see his, I, I saw this, his decline. And I mean, not only in like the skills and, but like just vision that he kept getting caught, you know, getting caught out um, by, uh, you know, I think it was, uh, forgot what team it was they play against but he kept getting caught out by uh the, the the opposing mid laner like and the jungler um like many times i mean he was the reason why they lost that last series in my opinion so i think forge going up against that bad form you know cream i think forge will do okay i mean forge i think forge is okay um i actually think he is probably one of the worst players on that roster for anyone's legend um along with zdz but you know, I think he's okay. So, I, but I, I get going up against bad form cream. I think Forge will be all right. And then in the bottom lane, I very much prefer Betty and Chocho. Uh, Chocho and Xiao Hao have been the best two players for anyone's legend, setting up his teammates in team fights and around objectives. Um, Chocho has been up and down uh, here in the last series. I think I think against FPX, but. You know, most likely going up against Abel and Cold, who have been okay at best. I think Betty and Chocho should win that matchup. So overall, like I said, I like Xiao Hao over Aki. I think that's the biggest gap there is um, for, for this matchup. Um, I know ZDZ has been decent, especially on Camille 
and kind of more on aggressive split champ, um, split champions, in my opinion. Um, so I do think he'll be okay. I, mean, I don't think he will let Shanji like snowball. In my opinion, maybe he will one game, but I just cannot see that happening you know, uh, for the, for the whole series, a best of three series. Um, so I do think that's going to be okay in the top lane and then Xiao Hao big jungle gap over a key. And then in the bottom lane is Betty and Cho Cho. I think they're going to win against Abel and cold in my opinion. So I think anyone's legend is going to win two to one. I think OMG can take a series, um, you know, behind Shanji or cream if he meets the potential that they, he has. Um, so I do think anyone's legend should win this matchup. All right, I think that's it for the match predictions. I do, I do want to kind of predict the match uh, kill upside. So obviously the LCK matchups here, um, I think DK, HLE is probably the least. So I'll go from the highest to lowest. I think the highest here today is going to be OMG versus AL. Um, so I think that kind of makes me favorite AL a lot here today on this slate. And then LGD versus DMWE, that matchup as number two kill upside is kill upside. So AL and then WE are probably my two favorite. Um, and then for LCK, I think this one will be the third highest kill upside matchup on the slate. Um, KT has been playing a little bit faster the last couple a couple weeks actually, with aiming in life coming to life, <laughs> um, and Rascal being a little bit more aggressive and Bikla as well. So I do think this is this has more kill upside than the last the lowest and last and the lowest kill upside that I'm predicting for this matchup between Team the H uh, HLE versus Stalin Kia. So I think that has the least you know kill upside. And again, that one key has a huge favorite. So there's a good chance that they'll just win 13 to three or something like that. So that, you know, that kind of correlates with what my, my, my match predictions are. Um, so yeah, anyway, so yeah, I like all the favorites probably except for team WE here today. Um, I do think he, they have tremendously better matchups uh, in, in, in their respective lanes uh, for their players especially, like I said, the bottom half with Shanks, Shing, and Kadaya starting, who I, whom I prefer. I don't know. I have a lot of question marks for Demon, um, but, you know, that's the risk I'm willing to take because, you know, it's not typical that the top laner makes a huge difference and just snows balls and win the game, you know, uh, by himself. So I do think that will be mitigated a little bit. So anyway, so yeah, I, I prefer Team WE. Like I said, that's the only underdog that I like on the slate. Um, but otherwise, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, this video is sponsored by True DFS. So come check out their channel. Um, and then I also have a Patreon where I share my exact match predictions and my favorite plays um, for DFS purposes uh, for each team. And also um, any prize picks, uh, prop bets, if you are interested in those, if you are a prize picks, uh, prize picks fan or just straight up betters, you know, my information, you know, people have found my information helpful in that regard. So anyway, so yeah, I hope you guys uh, make some money today. Um, hope you guys enjoy the video. If you have any questions, you know, where to reach out to me at DFS Chan. Um, yeah, good luck out there and hope you uh, make, make some money and meet, meet you at the top of the leaderboard. Have a good one. Bye-bye.